Hi guys and welcome back to Lotus Tech Talk and in this video we'll be mounting the crash box. Yes, it's unbelievable the crash box has arrived. It was a back order of six months. It was ordered in January and today is July 2018 and it just arrived. Now mounting the crash box isn't all that hard to do. And I'm going to show you how we are going to mount this. But you're going to need a couple of tools. But before we start working on it, uh, a little bit of tech talk first. So first of all, the crash box is, a, is not a fiberglass and it's not carbon. It's a very special composite built by Lotus themselves. So if it is damaged, you should never uh, replace it with a second hand or an aftermarket part because it's all about your safety. It protects you from frontal impact. Uh, the point is a bit about the crash box is that it needs to be mounted properly onto the aluminum chassis and the way it's mounted is done with a bonding kit and the original bonding kit is a product from Chemical Down or Down Chemicals I think it's called and it's hard to get. So I've gone to a Lotus specialist who is specialized in repairing Lotus Elises and he recommended to me uh, to use the Sudal Carbond. 955 DG as a very good alternative. It's a um, it's a polyurethane glue uh, which you need to apply. Uh, but before you can do that, you will have to put some primer up, and these are the little primer bottles that come with it. Not expensive, I think altogether that's something like 20 euros. And then uh, before you put it all on, you need to clean everything so there's no grease left on it. And I'm going to use isopropanol, and this is the kind of stuff you can get in any pharmacy, so that's nothing special. You're going to need some other tools like a very clean brush to apply the primer. Uh, you will need some measuring tools um, because you want to align the stuff right. Uh, you will need a marker, so you want to set reference points uh, on, the other, um, on the rig we will install. So when I say a rig, I just mean a supporting structure uh, that we'll uh, use to mount the crash box uh, properly. Because the crash box itself uh, is not affecting the geometry of the car but it has to be mounted correctly. It shouldn't be swinging to the left or to the right, up or down, because the crash box is actually holding the front clamshell in place. It's also holding the radiator shout and the radiator itself. So it has to be done proper. And on top of it, um, if you have to pull your load to release, the front part right here, which is not fitted for the moment, that's where you're going to tow uh, the load to release. So you're towing it on the crash box. So you want to make sure that the crash box is really fitted properly. And I'll show you all that. You're also going to need a couple of clamps and, you know, nothing special to hold it all in place and some clean towels. And that's all you're going to need. So it's not really anything special. So before we start, I'm going to take you to the process. And if you can bear with me a few more minutes, uh, then I'd like to talk about it on how we're going to proceed. First of all, we make sure that the car is absolutely level. Secondly, we'll dry fit the crash box. We'll align it and we will create a supporting rig for it. And we'll place reference markers on it. So afterwards, when we place it back really for real onto the uh, chassis, we just need to look on the markers and things will be a lot easier. And then we remove the crash box again, we'll prepare the surface, we degrease it, we apply the primer, then we apply the beads on it after it dried for a while, and then finally uh, we'll push the crash box in place and clamp it in place and let it dry for two days. So let's get on with it. The first thing we're going to do is to place the car absolutely level. Now I'm not going to let the car sit on its suspension because if it does, when you mount the crash box on it, you're going to start pushing a bit and it's going to move around and your reference points that you have placed on the jig are no longer going to match up. So uh, it's better to place the vehicle on a stand or even on a jack on both sides so you can jack it up and you can level it. Now leveling the Elise uh, will do that with a level. And you can use whatever you want, but this is a normal builder's level. And for my part, you can even use a laser if you have one. Let me show you where we place it. So we'll place the level meter right on top of the front part of the Lotus Elise. In between the two markers. Now, once you place it, make sure there's nothing underneath. That it's really sitting flush and level on the surface. And then all you need to do is what's the level, right? So just look into that and make sure that the bubble is right in the middle and jack up whatever side of the vehicle you need to jack up. So let me just do that. 
Right, while well, you guys keep an eye on the level meter, um, I will actually jack up the car bed on one side until it's really level. So now that we have the load is completely level, we'll need to inspect the surface or the touch surface of the crash box that there are no elements that are uh, obstructing. Uh, sometimes when they glue that together, you'll see that there are little pieces sticking out. See, so this is a touch surface. And that's one of those pieces of bonding compound that's sticking out. So if you leave that in, you can't fit it flush against the, the front of the um, release. So I'm going to cut this out. So the next thing we're going to do is to dry mount the crash box and install the jig. But before I do so, I will put some spacers onto the crash box on the surfaces uh, that are touching the aluminum chassis of the Lotus Elise. And this is going to sound very weird to you, um, but we need to do this because the bonding kit, which is in between the crash box and the actual aluminum chassis has to have a certain thickness when it's mounted so between one and two and a half, three millimeters. Uh, and that's why I'm putting these spacers up so I can do the proper reference points on the jig once we install the jig. So let me tape them on there now with some tape and then we can start uh, fitting or dry fitting the crash box at least. Align it and then put the supporting jig underneath and then we put the markers up and then basically we are almost ready to start uh, mounting it for real. So let me tape it. Yep, and I'm using pink tape. No special purpose for that, but it's just the tape I have. I don't know if everybody does it like this, uh, but this is the way I'm doing it. I like to have things correctly done. If you don't feel that this is necessary, then be my guest. I mean, you can do it the way you want. You just can dry fit it without the spacers. And then, you know, if you use markers, then make sure that um, the, when you mount the crash box, it's sticking out a little bit in front of the markers. That will work as well. But I'd rather do it like this uh, because that's how it will actually be mounted. All right, here we go. Let's see. There's some small metal brackets on the side. Uh, I should have taken them off, but you don't have to really. So, now uh, we'll push it in place. And you have to make sure that the distance on the sides is good. Make sure there's no cable stuck in between. And then we can place a clamp on it so we can hold it in place. I should place a clamp on the bottom as well. And for the final clamps, once we have it all dry fitted and aligned, uh, we'll use some wooden blocks uh, to press it in because I don't really want to push on it um, just with this small surface. So now we have the crash box temporarily locked into place and uh, now we got to make sure it's absolutely center. That is critical uh, that it is. So um, you can check on the edges of the crash box and make sure that the distance on the edges to the aluminum body is exactly the same. And then it should be in the middle. And on that side, so now I'm just going to put up the level meter on the front and see if it's still level and replace the level meter there as well. And we just want to make sure that everything is actually level before we start marking things. So now that the crash box is in place, we should align it a bit if necessary <coughs> by um, loosening up the clamps and then move it. But always check with a level meter and that looks pretty good. Um, do it in the front as well. And as you can see, that looks quite good. And then make sure that the distance from the edges to the aluminum chassis is the same. Uh, you can use any type of ruler if you want. Uh, and this one is exactly a marker 19. Um, I don't care what it is, it's just 19. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I just want to make sure that the marker is the same. And it is exactly 19 as well. So I know that the distance from the chassis to the front is the same on both sides. I also know 
that it's horizontally perfectly level and then because the car is a uh, vertical level uh, and horizontally level I don't have to worry about it because I have the spacers if this is tilting up or down a bit I don't really need to worry about it so now um, we need to put a supporting fixture underneath so for the support structure you can use whatever you have uh, I'm just having some metal bars in a heavy block uh, they use that often for road signs and an aluminum bar and I'm just going to support the um, Christ box underneath and that's good enough but whatever you use uh, you have to make sure that it's not gonna move so all you need to do now is hold it to the bottom so it touches all on both edges of the crash box tie it down on one side and then tie it down on the other side it's not that hard to do now just feel I just feel with my hand if it's really nicely touching and that's it that's all what the support structure is uh, but now we'll start putting some markers up so once we mount the crash box in its final position with the mounting kit uh, or the bonding kit uh, we make sure that it lines up with the markers we will place on this bar so let me get the pen and start marking it now you can place the markers wherever you want to place them but I will place them right here and I will also place them on the Christ box. So this is my marker. I don't know if you can see it. And Christ box. I also will draw a line underneath the Christ box. And that will be my other marker on the other side. So there you have the first marker and the line underneath. It goes all the way to the other side. And then I place the marker there as well. So that's for the front support check. So this is the view from underneath the um, the crash box. And I'm just going to mark the contours where it's sitting because that will help me in um, putting up the primer. And I just go around the crash box so I know exactly where it sits. And I put a marker like this so we know where, the, where that needs to line up. And I will also mark the contours at the easier places on the edges and over here that's it and that should be good enough and we did the same thing on the other side so now we'll remove the crash box making sure that the reference is not moving or being touched because that's really important because that's how we will align it just gonna hold it a bit although so the next thing we'll do is remove all the spacers because that's no longer necessary I would say for the next time but I sincerely hope I don't have to do this twice it was already expensive enough and one crash is enough although I did crash it though it was somebody else who did it we now need to prepare the surfaces we'll prepare the surface of the crash box and we'll prepare the surface uh, of the aluminum part and then we are ready uh, to mount it you can actually see how I did the outlines so that's important because I only need to uh, put the um, primer in those areas so this whole area and everything which is between the white lines so meanwhile I placed some masking tape around the chalk lines that we drew before around the contours of the um, crash box because if I be going to clean it up with isopropanol then I would wipe up the lines so uh, and I don't want to lose these markings and this has to be really well cleaned We have degreased the surface, so now we'll put the Carbon 955 DG primer on. So for this purpose, I'm using a clean glass, a very clean glass, and I will just pour it in there. And we'll use the brush. Now don't touch this stuff with your fingers or your hands because that is not very nice stuff. Apply it all over
And don't forget to degrease the crash box itself because both surfaces must be absolutely grease free. Otherwise, um, the effect of the bonding will not work too well. Again, we're going to use isopropanol as a very good degreaser. There's no need to apply the uh, primer on this surface. The primer is only necessary on metal parts. So I guess it's time for a cup of coffee because we need to let the primer dry for at least 10 to 15 minutes. So I think we deserve the cup of coffee in between. Well, actually it's not coffee, it's tea. And once it's dried up, we'll apply beads of this bonding material uh, onto the uh, either the aluminum part of the load disease or actually on the uh, crash box itself. Uh, that's your choice where you want to put it on. Um, it is as easy. I prefer to do it on the crash box itself uh, because there I see where the touch areas are. Here I'm not too sure where it touches uh, so I, I might put too much up. Now when you apply the beads you gotta go around in a kind of snake kind of thing and you have to make sure that the beads are at least three to four millimeters thick and, and wide so that you have some room to press it in. The open time of the car bond uh, is between 15 and 40 minutes, all depending on the humidity in the year. So you have to work uh, rather quickly. That's why I, I already put up all the alignment and the reference points and the jig that we placed uh, underneath the crash box before. And remember, your jig should not have moved. If you stumbled on it, you have to start over. So let's see how it goes. So we will start to apply the beads. Now remember, you don't have too much open time. So with the beads applied, we'll now mount the crash box guys uh, so this is the moment of truth and remember we have to make sure that we got it in place from the right mo moment remember we did all the markers that's good and that's good so now look on the markers underneath that is in place and this one is not almost in place almost so that's good so now we put some clamps up and we are all done I'm not gonna tie down too hard from the beginning because remember, uh, we want to have the kit uh, in between. Yeah. And I think it's just sitting just right. Yeah. She is, and it's just sitting. This is resting on the bottom, that's good. So now I'm gonna put some more clamps up because that's what we need to do. Okay. All right, I still need to put clamp it on the sides. Check it underneath. Yeah, that looks good. It aligns and it Aligns so that is real good. So the last minute, last check because there isn't much more we can do about it. And look how perfect that is. It's just great. Now let me check the distance from the aluminum body. So that's, oops. So that's exactly 19. 
And on this side, it is exactly 19. All right, guys, this is it. Uh, we are done. The crash box is on the vehicle. So now we let it settle and then we'll carry on with the radiator shroud and then the radiator mountings. And then we'll complete the car in the follow on videos. So I would like to thank you for viewing. And if you have any comments or bad experiences or things that you think I should have done differently, please don't hesitate to place any comments because I'm always willing to learn from you all. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for viewing. Bye-bye.